Back in 1994, a hobbit by the name of Todd Howard got a job working for a small games company called Bethesda, where he was hired to work as a designer and producer for the new Terminator game. At the same time, the second game in the Elder Scrolls series was in development, and Todd was moved there to help finalize the game. Turns out, the guy had a knack for fantasy and RPGs, and he improved the game a lot, but instead of putting him back to work on Terminator, Todd was assigned to the spin-off game Elder Scrolls Redguard, which kinda looks like shit now, but considering this is what came before, I'd say Redguard is pretty ambitious. But they engineered the game to run on a very specific graphics card that nobody had, so very few people actually played it. The game still barely runs on the highest end hardware that you can get today. It was a flop. And even though it was a commercial failure, Todd was still recognized for his design skills. And so Todd ended up being a key developer for the next entry to the Elder Scrolls series. A little game called... Morrowind. Morrowind was the first open world game I had ever played. I got it when I was 7, so I barely understood the mechanics, but I still loved it. Morrowind was especially cool because it wasn't afraid to veer away from traditional fantasy. It was this weird, very alien setting. The ash storms and flying jellyfish and pterodactyl monsters. Also, the people in the game world all have their own shit going on. So Morrowind didn't feel like it was built around the player, but rather that you'd been dropped into this already established place. It felt lived in and immersive and huge, and it was awesome. And it was the big success that Bethesda needed to save itself from bankruptcy. After this, Todd became one of the most important members of Bethesda. And at this point in time, Todd was on top of the world. Oblivion was midway through development, and Todd was in charge. But nowadays, Todd is disliked and mocked by the collective internet. Many believe he is a liar and a predatory businessman. This is a huge meme in gaming communities. Todd is evil. He lies. He just wants you to buy Skyrim over and over. There's even this music video showcasing a compilation of Todd's sweet little lies. This video has almost 4 million views. But how much of this is true? Is Todd really a liar? What exactly has he lied about? We're gonna figure that out today. We're gonna kick it off with Fallout 3, where he said this. Um, being that we are Bethesda, um, <clears throat> everything gets a bit big, so as of last week, we're over 200 endings. That is not an exaggeration. Over 200 endings? That's crazy. There's no way that this game in 2008 had over 200 endings, right? Right. Exactly right. Fallout 3 that ended up being released had 26 endings, with all the faction variation cutscenes at the end, but all of those stem out from only four main endings. Now, there may have been over 200 endings planned at some point during the development of this game, but it was still bad to advertise it as such. Next up was Oblivion. Todd's most infamous alleged Oblivion fib is that of unscripted NPCs and radiant AI. Todd advertised Oblivion's new AI system as follows. Let's take a look at the other side of the game, our new radiant AI system. It allows NPCs to have full 24-7 schedules. These NPCs are not scripted. We give them general goals and they figure out on their own how to accomplish them. Good morning. The NPCs also have dynamic conversations. These are based on your actions and what's going on in the world. Now, if you've played Oblivion, you'd know that the NPCs are about as lifeless as rocks. How are you? Okay, you. Not bad. Good to hear. Anvil is all in an uproar. First the chapel attacked, now the prophet ranting about the end of the world. No! Sure. See you. You too. And this is reinforced with another series of popular videos, making fun of Oblivion's awkward and weird NPC behavior by posting confusing interactions with real people with Oblivion music in the background. Do you smoke a lot? No, oh, Mr. John. You don't smoke a lot, right? Nah. Do you smoke a lot? No. Not Sometimes at all? I do, but now I'm with Nah, you never smoke, right? No. Once in a while I got it. You don't smoke, right? I smoke sometimes. Sometimes I do, once in a while. I never Lester, smoke. Lester, do you smoke? Me? No, never. Once in a little while I got it. I can't get enough of these. Now, Oblivion's dialogue is weird and bad and silly and bad, but it is radiant, and you best believe it's unscripted. I don't know you, and I don't care to know you. I don't know you, and I don't care to know you. NPCs in this game are so goofy, and do totally random shit most of the time. And while it's a really primitive form of it, 
this is one of the first systems like it to ever exist. And without these first iterations that sucked, we wouldn't have gotten good Radiant AI, like in Red Dead or The Witcher. You know what, I'm gonna give Todd a pass on this one. Skyrim, the game that came out six times, and I bought it every time. And it was great, every time. But while showcasing Skyrim's gameplay for the first time, Todd said, You can walk all the way to the top of that mountain. What the fuck are you talking about? Have you tried? You can barely get halfway up with the gravity defying donkey. I spent a lot of time trying to climb that. Fuck you, Todd. And fuck you too, donkey. <laughs> But Todd's apparent deception had grown like the Grinch's heart. And by 2015, he finds himself on stage presenting Fallout 4. He says there will be no essential NPCs. He says there will be free post-launch content. And perhaps worst of all, he said, it just works. It just works. It just, it just works. It just works. It just works. It just works. But it didn't just work. There was no free post-launch content, only paid DLCs, and something changed in development, and they decided to make a ton of NPCs essential. Essential meaning they can't die, which is really lame, because every character attached to a quest is now invincible. This includes John Long and his wife from the first quest. And I hate those guys. I want to kill him dead. I want to kill him dead, man! Again with Fallout 4, it's not all flat-out blatant lying, but something more akin to false advertising. That is if you believe there's malice behind these decisions. But I don't think that's the case. I think Todd Howard might just be overly optimistic. A hype man who really thinks these games are going to be awesome. And I think that's what most people thought before Fallout 76. Let me set the stage for you. June 2018. Me and my pals spend all day getting ready. We've got barbecue chips, as well as neutral chips. We've got glass Coca-Cola bottles, Mountain Dew Code Red, and we got brownies in the oven. A gamer feast. And I'm with all of my friends, which at the time was like five guys. You know, we were goofing off most of the presentations. We didn't really care what was going on. That was until Bethesda came on. We go silent. And when Todd comes on, he's saying the craziest shit we've ever heard. 16 times the detail? And I get to play Fallout online with my best buds at my side? I won't even know I'm on a server? <laughs> Me, the boys, the internet, everybody is stoked for Fallout 76. And then it comes out. Everyone knows how the launch and reception to Fallout 76 went. And apparently after a few years of working on it, it's better now. But it left such a sour taste in the gamer mouths of myself and many others. And I just can't bring myself to go back. On launch day, I couldn't even get into the game. Neither could I on the second day. But on the third day, me and my friends finally got on together. My pals, they were. Invisible. I couldn't even see them. Just a sad display name. Floating over nothing. Minutes later, I disconnect. And when I load back in... This happens. And I never played it again. A lot of folks on the internet were upset with Bethesda, and in turn, upset with their spokesperson, Todd Howard. And the problem is that, for like the fourth time, Todd had advertised a game that didn't exist yet. Fallout 76 made a lot of people lose faith in Bethesda, but I still think they have the capability to make great games. The failure that was Fallout 76 was catastrophic, but it seems to have taught them a lesson in PR. Starfield just had gameplay show for the first time and it looks sick, albeit gray, and Todd danced around really saying much about the game. No seemingly empty promises, but also thousands of planets, like, there's no way all of them are very well detailed. I'm sure it's not going to be another No Man's Sky where, you know, it's trillions of randomly generated, empty, dull planets. But I don't think Todd Howard or Bethesda meant to deceive the public in any way. I think that Todd is just overly optimistic. And the ambition of Todd has gotten the best of him time and time again. Whether it's attaching the potential success of your new spinoff game to a piece of hardware that nobody bought, or trying to showcase and sell his cool new game that is currently cool, 
but it's going to have to be cut in half midway through development to be put on consoles. Todd did lie, but it was mostly half lies or exaggerations or things that were once true and ended up not being true later. And, you know, in the end, I forgive the little hobbit man. Not only for the lies, but I, I forgive him for wearing that same jacket for like four or five years in a row. I'm Club, and this has been a lesson in forgiveness. And to not take video games so seriously. Turns out, Todd is no god. He's only a man. A, a very little, tiny, hobbit-sized man.